for Drew's News, your daily slurp of those good news noodles. <laughs> and with me at the desk is a man I'd lady and the tramp with any time. It's Rossi <laughs> Ross Matthews. Hi, everybody. Which one am I? Are, we, are you lady or the tramp? Uh, it depends on the day, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, actually, speaking of a, a lady. Yes. Every night before we rest our head on that sweet pillow, we all have our favorite bedtime rituals. Mm -hmm. Well, Charlotte Tilbury, the mega famous makeup artist to the stars, just revealed her show of hands. Who knows who Charlotte Tilbury is? Got it. Okay, insider reports that before bed, Charlotte takes off her makeup and then reapplies her mascara and eyeliner. She calls it her bedroom eye. And after seven years of marriage, her husband has never seen her without it. What? She says she keeps, it keeps the magic alive. Okay. I think this is very sweet of, of her. You know, I think I, I like the intention, which is, you know, you want to be the best version of you for your partner. But you're doing all that before you go to bed. What do you look like when you wake up, right? Is it just all smeared? And how much time are you spending washing your pillowcases? Girl, take a day off. <laughs> this is too much. Well, we've got someone in the audience who's uh, put on makeup to go to bed, Gabrielle. Oh, Hi. Okay, so you do Hi, this? Ross. Hi, Drew. So hear me out here. Okay. When you're at the start of a relationship, you know, you want to look your best when you wake up in the morning. So I'll wear my makeup to bed in hopes that the next day it'll still be just as fresh and cute. Usually not, but yeah. still. Aren't you a little smeary when you wake definitely. up? Definitely. I mean, it's definitely not how I started the night, um, the next morning, but you know, you still feel a little bit makeup, still a little bit more, you know. I've lost that loving feeling uh, as the <laughs> song goes. I need to let my skin breathe. I wear a lot of makeup. I have a company called Flower Beauty, so we're always testing. Yeah. So I need to have my like no makeup moments so that I can let my skin breathe and heal because uh -huh. I'm always playing with makeup. I, I am obsessed. I will not go to bed without removing my makeup. If I woke up with my makeup, something really wrong happened. <laughs> that was a you good, had a good night. Time. <laughs> um, I am like the obsessive face washer. Um, but <laughs> those few times, maybe I stayed up too late and forgot to wash. I wake up and I'm like, I love the way my eyes look. It's actually sexy. Oh, like, a little smudgy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. little rock and roll, a little cool. Bad girl. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you're the tramp. <laughs> yeah. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ross, your story. Thank you, Gabrielle. Thank you. Okay, I cannot wait to get your thoughts on this one because speaking of keeping the magic alive, there's one married couple from New Jersey who's been doing it for 40 years now. But how? By scheduling their fights. The Atlantic reports Liz Cutler and Tom Kreutz swear by this system. They schedule a disagreement meeting once every three months. And in between, they keep a running list of all their grievances with their partner. And when they finally come to the table, they've got some ground rules. One, they don't shut the other person down. If another one says it's a problem, it's a problem. They accept the fact that change will come, but it might be in baby steps. And experts saying that some distance can help people cool down and having a date helps force people who have a conflict actually talk about it. But here's the dilemma for me, mm -hmm. right? If you're scheduling every three months, we're gonna sit down and hash things out. Are you holding it in for all that time? Are you spending that time collecting evidence about, oh, I don't like this about you, or I don't like this about you, but I'm gonna keep it in and let it boil. And then on August 8th, we're going at it. I, I don't know. Okay, I love this. I have learned recently in the last few years when I've come at situations even five minutes later, I'm not as hot. I'm coming in a little calmer, a little more rational. Then give it a day or two. Sometimes I'm like, you know, I don't even care anymore. Right. I'm gonna let that go. Mm. So I'm not hating it, Ross. I'll tell you, here's the deal. I think you address little fires and then yes, a state of the union meeting once a month would be really good. But if you're gonna schedule that, you should also be scheduling other things like date nights, 
Sex, something fun, something you're not dreading all month long. Can we have a little fun, please, too? In the meantime. Well, Ross, um, one month today, mm -hmm. um, from one month today, I think you and I should come with our notebook. Oh, um, and I'm going to need another notebook. Oh! No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love you. I know. Raise a hand. Who would do this uh, every three months? Raise the polls. Raise uh, your polls. Green for I would do this. Red for no way in heck. Oh, my God. It is overwhelmingly red. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about this, Drew, in about three months, all right? One month. One, One month. month. Okay.